If your psoas or your front of the hip area feels achy and tight, stop doing the standard hip flexor stretches. In this video, you're gonna learn why that is and five exercises to get to the root cause so you can relieve that achiness and that tightness for good. Hey, it's Coach e here from Precision Movement and we're back with another YouTube video to help you move freely and without pain. And today we're focusing on this area, the hip flexor area. And we're gonna focus a little bit more on the psoas muscle, but there are other muscles involved in the exercises that I'm gonna show you and in the problems of achiness and tightness in the front of the hip right here. Now, if you like unique, time efficient, and most importantly, effective exercises to get you out of pain and to keep you moving, then make sure you're subscribed to our channel because that's what we do around here. Now, before we get into the five exercises, I wanna cover a little bit of background, some anatomy, and some scientific reasoning behind why the psoas muscle and the hip flexor area does get tight and achy. And even before that, I just wanna commend you for being here, for continuing to be a student and learning and taking control of your own health and well being. This is something that we need more of, and we need more people like you. So keep it up. Good work. Now, the muscles involved, I mentioned the psoas muscle, it's a popular one, and it's part of the hip flexor group. So hip flexion is this movement right here, bringing the knee to the chest, that's hip flexion. The psoas is one muscle that does it. There's also the iliacus, and those two muscles are often combined and called the iliopsoas, but we, like, we think of them differently because they have slightly different functions, which I'm gonna cover in a second. There's also the rectus femoris, which is a quadricep muscle, it's part of the quadriceps group, but because it crosses the hip joint, it can contribute to hip flexion. The thing is, we just don't want it to contribute to hip flexion too much. And the last muscle that I'll talk about is the pectineus. And that's a short muscle in the front of the hip here, and it does hip flexion and adduction. So these are kind of the four main hip flexor muscles, and the psoas is the one that we're gonna focus on because of where it originates. It originates on the different vertebrae in the lumbar spine. And this tells us that it contributes to hip flexion, yes, but it also contributes to something at the lumbar spine. That something is lumbar stability, especially in the neutral position or the slightly extended position. So that's a key cue throughout all of the exercises that you'll see is that we need to maintain that lumbar spine's position so that the psoas can effectively work. So now that you can see it and you can visualize it, it should help you to execute the exercises better and get more out of the exercises. So that's one of the cues that is really important when you do the exercises. So remember that, we're gonna cover a couple other. Now, why does the psoas get tight and weak sitting? That's one thing that contributes to so many issues in today's society. We sit too much, but specifically when we sit, we are on our butts, often in a posterior pelvic tilt. So if we had a tail, it would be as if we were tucking our tail between our legs and with a flexed lumbar spine. So based on what I just said, the psoas can effectively work in that position. The other thing is we've got a backrest. So we're leaning back. We're in this bad position, this slumped, flexed position. So the psoas is shortened up and it doesn't have to work because we're on this backrest. So it, the psoas doesn't have to contribute to this proper neutral spine, good alignment of the lumbar spine, and stability of the lumbar spine. So if we're not using it, we're gonna lose it. Use it or lose it. That's a maxim that applies to pretty much everything, human at least. But if we're not using it, we're losing it, so it's getting weak. It's atrophying, it's in the shortened position, it's getting short, and that causes so many issues. So we're gonna do exercises to restore all of those issues. Now. I mentioned at the outset of, this, outset of this video, no static stretching. The standard stretch is this hip flexor kneeling lunge, half kneeling lunge hip flexor stretch, where you basically go like this. You could stick an arm up, you can reach over to the side like that and stretch out the hip flexor. I used to prescribe this quite a bit actually, but I rarely do so now. And when I do, there's a few specific cues that we need to keep in mind. The problem with this is that Number one, it doesn't restore strength. So if you're expecting lasting changes in muscle length and range of motion from this, you're not gonna get it because you're not gonna strengthen the muscle with this. 
And number two, it's really easy to be over aggressive with this stretch. You can get in there, you can really put your weight into it, reef on it, and be aggressive. The issue here is that doing so will aggravate the anterior part of the hip, specifically the hip joint capsule and the ligaments there. When you do that, you can increase your achiness and you think, oh, I need to do more stretching. You do it, you keep doing it, and it's just a vicious cycle and you're gonna get worse and worse and more and more achy and you're not gonna really improve your hip flexor length. So we're gonna go through five exercises in this routine that you can do two, three days a week for if you wanna feel some good effects, at least four weeks. It could be up to eight weeks, but four weeks is a good amount of time to feel some good effects. Two weeks, you might feel some stuff. I mean, you might do, start to feel some beneficial effects by doing it just once with me today. But if you want your results to persist and the changes to persist, you've got to put in the time and the reps. The first technique we're going to go through is active self myofascial release for the hip flexors. And with this, I've got a massage ball here. And I'm going to use a weight. That's the easiest thing to use for this exercise. You can use apply pressure with your hand, but it's much easier to do it with the weight. For this, all you're going to do is in the front of the hip where those muscles are, you're going to place the ball, then you're going to place the weight on the ball and keep your knee bent to start. Once you got some pressure there, relax all the muscles. So you're not tensing up the hip flexors and then just slide the legs slowly forwards. Now you're going into hip extension and then move the ball to another area and repeat. If you feel anything weird, you might be on a vessel. Just don't go on that area. Don't do anything that feels weird or causes more pain. So you're going to reset all around the front of the hip here for one to two minutes. And if you only have one side that bothers you, do both sides. This is good for you. And this will help to restore tissue quality, break up any adhesions or scar tissue, and allow that muscle to work properly through its full range of motion. Allow it to contract through its full range of motion. So that's active self myofascial release for the hip flexors, one to two minutes per side. After that, we've restored length there. After that, we want to get the activation going right away. We never stretch or we never go for massages and then just leave it at that. We loosen the tissue up, improve the quality of the tissue, then we activate that tissue. And that's how we can get those changes that we've gained through the massage or through the stretch or the release, we can get them to stick. So the next exercise is the standing glute contraction. This is in the Ram Aramco app. And I've shown this in other videos, but it's very simple. All you do is you start off good posture, good alignment, relaxed, knees soft, not hyperextended, just soft. And then you're going to slowly ramp up glute activation with a little bit of internal rotation of the hips, so turning the thighs inside this way, just a little bit. It could be like one to five degrees. That's all. You're going to ramp it up nice and strong, as hard as you can in terms of activating the glutes and then holding that for five to 10 seconds. And then you release gradually. So it's a slow ramp up and slow ramp down. The key is that internal rotation. That'll help you to keep your weight on your feet even, not rolling out to the sides, and it keeps that alignment of the pelvis and the hips. So again, I'm standing here, I'm gonna ramp up the glute activation with a little bit of internal rotation. Once I'm holding it as strong as I can, without any pain or issues, I'm breathing and holding for five to 10 seconds or one to two slow breaths. And then I ramp it down. And what this is doing is it's activating, we're focused on activating the glutes, but it's gonna co-contract around the hips, get all the hip muscles working, those hip flexor muscles that we talked about earlier, and it gets them working in this neutral or slightly extended position. Because remember, we've got our hips stuck in this position from all the sitting. So now we're lengthening it and we're activating the muscle. So we're restore, starting to restore that activation, restore that strength. 
for this exercise, you two to three sets, no, one to two sets actually, four to six reps, holding for five to 10 seconds. After that, we're gonna to go to the standing slumpy psoas. And this is a great exercise because it dissociates the commonly associated movement pattern of hip flexion, which is when we flex our hips, we often posteriorly pelvic tilt and flex our lumbar spines. But by doing that, we're not effectively targeting the psoas muscle, especially. So we're gonna do the opposite. What you do is you stand against the wall, lean against the wall, and just get in bad posture. So you're starting off in that posterior tilt, lumbar flexion, and slumped spine. It's really bad posture. From here, I'm gonna do one side, I'm gonna flex the hip as I anteriorly pelvic tilt and straighten up and get into good posture, good spinal posture. At the top here, I'm holding, and what I'm thinking of is keeping my pelvis level, so I might have to drop this hip towards the ground, and then breathing naturally and sucking the leg into the pelvis. Those two cues. So I'm here holding, and then from there, I slowly lower down and try to feel the hip flexors lengthen and keep them contracted to work that eccentric motion of the hip flexors. So again, let's demo that. I'll do the other side, so switch sides. Start off slumped posture, bad posture, and then I'm gonna flex the hip and get into good posture at the same time and hold at the top, keep driving the knee up to flex the hip and activate those hip flexors and think of pelvis level here. So dropping this hip towards the ground and sucking the leg into the pelvis. So sucking the thigh into the pelvis. Not reaching it towards the wall, but sucking it away from the wall. Strong support leg here. And then keep those muscles on as I drop the foot slowly to the ground for a soft landing. That's the standing slumpy psoas. And it's a great exercise to work this muscle in the proper way to start to build strength here. Now, once you've got good activation, we can actually use some, add some external load like a dumbbell to this because by then your cueing, your technique should be good. You know all the cues there. And all you do is you start off same way and then place the dumbbell on the knee and then suck that leg in, drive that knee up. And here we can progressively add load to build strength, just like any other exercise we would do in the gym. So it's a great way to get that psoas activated and then use the same technique and cues to get it stronger. Now, one thing that a lot of people, one problem that a lot of people run into is over recruitment of the TFL, which is another hip flexor. And it's not one that I talked about earlier because we don't really want it to hip flex too much. But if the TFL is working too much, the tip you can do, a couple tips you can do to shut it off is when you're flexing the hip, you're going out a little bit, so a little abduction and a little bit of external rotation. And that'll target more the pectineus, the iliopsoas, the iliacus, and turn off the TFL. So those cues there can help you adjust if you're feeling too much TFL activation on the outer hip over here. So that's standing slumpy psoas. For that, do two to three sets, four to six reps per, holding for five to 10 seconds. And if you can, add load, start to add load. Next up, we've got one of my favorite techniques to restore this hip extension range of motion, which is your lengthened hip flexor position. It's the side lying hip extension and range expansion technique. So for this, we're lying on our side and make sure you're in good posture in terms of your spine, you're not curled up into the fetal position. And I'm gonna work this bottom leg. I'm gonna actively bring my leg back. Let me switch views for you. It'll be a little easier for you to see. So I'm gonna actively bring my leg back this way. So now I'm in hip extension with the glute activation. And this is the range that I wanna work. So I'm driving it back and right there, the first activation is holding there. Glute activation, keep trying to drive my Heel back, holding for 10 to 15 seconds, strong contraction of the glutes. And then I'm gonna place my other foot on the knee 
and drive my knee into the foot, not letting it move. And what this is doing is it's strengthening the hip flexors in this extended range of motion. Again, 10 to 15 seconds holding, nice and strong, keep activating. And the last contraction, there are three contractions, is the hip extension again, driving the heel back, firing up the glutes, trying to get deeper into the range of extension. Maintaining good posture, breathing, and then let it go. And that's one cycle on that side, and I would switch sides and do two to four cycles, and that's gonna work that end range of motion of the hip flexors, that lengthen range of motion of the hip flexors, and it strengthens both the hip flexors and the glutes there, the hip extensors there, and that's what's gonna tell your brain, hey, I've got strength here, so I'm using it, so I'm not gonna, don't, don't lose it, I need this. All right, so that's the side lying, hip extension, end range expansion, ERE technique. The final one we're gonna go through is another one that you can progressively add load to, and it's called the front support hip flexion. So for this, you can see I got some bands. I've got these ankle straps here. I've got an ankle strap attached over there, and then I'm strapping up over here. I'm gonna crawl forward off the mat here, and then Front support is basically push-up position. And from there, all I'm doing is I'm flexing the hip. Same cues apply. Keep the pelvis level, so don't hike the hip. Keep driving the knee up, so I'm activating constantly. It's just a two-second hold there, and then return. And then two-second hold all the way up, sucking the pelvis, the leg into the pelvis, and then controlling the way back. And the good thing with this band setup is I can add bands if I need more load. And this exercise is an example of functional integration because here I need that good core stability to maintain alignment of the spine and to train this aligned spine, which is necessary for any sport you're doing, baseball, tennis, you want good posture and an aligned spine. So I've got the core stability going while the hip flexion is going. So even if you're running, you want good posture and the ability to maintain good posture as you're running and the hip flexors are working properly. So this is a great exercise. And for this one, do two to three sets, six to 10 reps, depending on how much load you got, but keep the reps no more than 12. But if you can get enough load and enough bands so that it's challenging and you can only do six to 10 reps, that's how you're gonna build strength. So this whole routine, again, do it two to three times a week. The more intensity that you use, like the more weight you use or the more bands you use, the lower frequency per week you'd wanna do. If you're only doing body weight, you can easily do this three days a week and give it at least four weeks. And if you do that and you drop the static stretching, you're gonna feel looser, you're gonna have greater range of motion and you're gonna have greater strength. And if you have pain, hopefully you're gonna have less pain. And I'd love to know how it goes for you. So leave us a comment down below. So that is today's video. Hope you found it enlightening and you found something useful and you're going to do this routine more importantly. And got some other stuff for you if you want to check it out. Some other videos that are related here and here and they're pretty popular. And if you do have pain, if you like this approach, the best that we can give you is our hip pain solution program. So click the link down there because it includes exercises like this and a lot more and it includes the approach and the programming that is easy to follow and time efficient.